Hello friends, this is Fadal at eLearning X by Hano Academy. I am here to show you an easy and free simple way of recording lectures and classes both in audio and video and have them sent to your students on demand. Now what you're first going to need is a headset that contains a microphone. It's going to be used for the lecture's audio so that the students can use it anywhere and everywhere. Here is a display of my desktop screen. Now, we want to use Debut Recording Software. Debut Recording Software is a video capture and screen crash program, and it's what we're going to use to record these lectures and classes. Now, they don't have no gimmicks behind it, and it is free. And what you want to do is to click on the first link. And you want to click on this where it says Download Now. Right, once you have gone through with the installation, there should be a desktop shortcut which says Debut Video Capture Software. What you want to do, you want to double click it and this will pop up. Now this is your control panel for recording lectures. All you need to do is technically just press the big red button and it will record. But first, I'm going to show you a few other important functions which you will need to know. Now, this control panel may have a lot of other things on it that may cause anxiety or confusion, but there's really only two to three buttons you should really concern yourself with. But what we want to do is to stretch this window and we want to click on audio options which is located towards the top right of the control panel. What we want to do is to make sure that speakers is checked off along with microphone. This is because you may want to play an educational video in your lecture and you want to make sure that the students can hear what you're playing. So let's click on them. Now go on mouse options. You want to make sure that show mouse cursor is clicked off. This is so that the mouse cursor is visible within the recording, making it easier for students to understand any action happening. So let's click that off. Now, we are almost ready to go. Remember, for the beginning, I do recommend that recording in full screen mode means that your entire screen will be recorded. There are methods of recording just in partial screen, which you may want to explore later, but right now we are ready to start recording. Press it and it will say start recording. Let's record. It's going to say start recording. Make sure you click on now, use current mode. It is now recording. As of now, what you and I see on my screen is going to be recorded with this program. So if you want to open a PowerPoint, you can. I'm going to open up one of mine to demonstrate. Everything you see now will be visible to your students. If you just want to show this part only, everything you see now will be visible to your students. If you just want to show this part only, you can click on full screen mode on PowerPoint or the view only part of your screen. You will want to also test your audio simply because the better quality of the sound on your lecture or webinar, the better the quality of education. And that's a number one rule for online lectures. The problem with live lectures is that they allow everyone to speak at once and if there is one or two people that forget to turn on their microphone, it is going to create feedback and the entire session will be ruined. And for that reason, I recommend making your video, giving it to your students and perhaps answering questions on chat or whatever you would like to do. 
So let's see, while we are looking at this site analysis, let's just say we also want to play some audio from YouTube. So not only are you hearing my voice and looking at this video and hearing the audio of this video, different ways of thinking about all the sort of climatic issues of sun and wind and rain and all of that. So now we'll talk more about in a minute. Orientation is always uh, when you see orientation in the context of uh, of the. So now you're not only hearing my voice, you're also listening to this video, which you can make louder. How does the or softer? So now that we are done with this, let's click everything off and press Control F10. You'll notice that the video has ended quite abruptly. This is because we have pressed Control F10. Control F10 is a combination used in the debut recording software to stop the recording. The reason why this video recording hasn't ended is because I'm using a different software to do so. Now you may be wondering, okay, how can I send this to my students, which is what part two will be about. Here is the control panel. What you want to do is press the recordings. This recordings is a tab which shows all the finished recordings done by the debut software. If you want, you can rename your file by right clicking or by pressing F2. In the latest versions of the debut software, the current format is set at MP4. MP4 is a low memory, high resolution format, which is what you want to upload on the internet. However, on the older versions, the format is set at a .avi, which is an excellent video format. However, the problem is that it has a very high memory. Say for example, if you recorded an hour long session, the size of that lecture would estimate at around one gigabyte. It would take forever and maybe impossible to upload it and have your students download it. So the second part of this presentation will be taking this very tremendous, will be taking potentially a very tremendous AVI file and convert it to a compressed but still a very high resolution MP4. What you'll want to do is click convert. As soon as we did, there popped another program called Prism. Prism is a shareware program and eventually it's going to irritate you to buy it. There are many, many ways of converting these programs without buying it, but it can be quite complicated. So now we know the name of your file and its AVI format. If you wanted to turn it to a .mp4 format, you can click on the output, output format right here and click on the desired format you desire which we want is in .mp4 and you'll want to convert it once you're finished converting it you'll want to click on save as and you, you can save it wherever you'd like i'll save it at desktop so despite having the video file converted or it already being at an mp4 format it may still be too large to be sent directly through email so what you'll have to do is you'll have to upload it to a server on the internet google drive may be the most common but there is a whole bunch of other servers out there some are free some aren't some have an expiry date and then try to that's in a payment so that's all there is we have both of these parts, how to create your lectures online, how to compress the large AVI files to MP4, and I gave you some tips now on high quality, low memory MP4, and to upload it to a server or location, and then you can give that location to your students. And now, you don't have to go to class, and they don't have to go to class.